All right, guys, on April 1st, I just want to see the Marvel movie Morbius with my family, and I'm gonna try my best to give a little mini review or whatever. So I'm just gonna get straight to the point. Um, rather you're a casual comic book fan or just a casual movie goer or whatever, cause Marvel's kind of getting into a phase where they've done most of, like mainstream characters that people know about, you know, just surface level stuff like the X Men, you know, the Avengers, the Hulk, Spider Man, stuff that the average casual people who know about Marvel know. So when I would get in more into an era where they're covering more less kind of known characters, where well, you're not gonna actually know who this is unless you're like a diehard. Uh, comic book fan so there's gonna be you know multiple people that make up the audience that see this but uh, i just gotta be honest with you as a casual marvel fan because i'm more of a marvel guy but i can't honestly just tell you i know everything about marvel um this movie is not very good it's not completely horrible like you might be entertained watching it but in terms of pacing, world building, uh, the writing slash plot, and just the characters, I guess, it's not really memorable. Like, it's not really all that good of a movie. And it's sad that they executed this all wrong because it kind of hurts Morbius' is exposure as a Marvel character. Because, you know... Most people who don't know shit about him in the first place, they might get turned off on. But uh, I'm going to just get into the plot first. So, movie starts off in Costa Rica. So, like, it opens up, it shows Morbius limping in crutches. Apparently, he needs bats for some type of research and all that. Vampire bats, to be specific. The next thing we see, we're going back to a flashback in Greece. So, we don't really know if, like, it was an orphan. If his friend Milo was an orphan. By the way, this is really weird shit. Like, I'm sorry to get off topic, but he named him Milo because Milo was the first person that slept in aside from him. Because it's kind of like, it's kind of like a children's hospital for kids with rare blood diseases or whatever. But a child that he knew that died was named Milo. So he named his childhood friend Milo, which we'll get into that later in the plot, which that's kind of really morbid and weird. And I don't know why they wrote that. But anyway, so they both have a very rare blood disease that I'm not really sure they kind of explained or touched on like what it does to them. But it's implied that they have short life expectancy, causes them to be really weak. I don't know if it was implying that they couldn't like synthesize like blood in a body on their own. If they, yeah, I think it said it was something missing in their DNA or something. That's what the disease caused. So it's like they couldn't regulate blood normally. It kind of sound like almost like they had diabetes. I'm not that medically aware. Like I'm pretty ignorant, obviously. So anybody who actually watched the movie that understood what the disease was called, or if it was based upon a real world disease. Please enlighten me below, but I didn't get it. I don't even remember the name. But uh, it, it's a really rare blood disease. So as children, they make a pact that they're going to grow up and try to figure out a way to cure it or something. Now, there's a situation where uh, his friend Milo's machine is malfunctioning. And Morbius, as a child, like, he's implied to be some type of prodigy or something. He just takes a piece and just like puts it in the machine and just fixes it and saves his life. Next thing we know, I guess the head of the children's hospital research place or whatever, kind of like their mentor as children. He tells Morbius that he's gifted due to the fact that most people would not have been able to fix that machine that easy. And he did it as a child. Now, again, this gets to where like the writing is kind of weird and bad. Because, okay, if this child is a genius because he just fixed a machine without having no knowledge of it, 
shouldn't he be like some type of engineer or mechanical technician or something? Why the hell would he grow up to be a doctor? Keep in mind that the backstory for the main villain, spoilers obviously, which turns out to be uh, Morbius's friend, is like completely different, and they just changed it for the sake of the movie. So I said it to say they didn't add, need to add this in here. They could have showed him doing some other shit to prove that he was a child prodigy, but whatever, man. So next thing you know, we fast forward. Uh, he's a doctor. And apparently he won a Nobel Peace Prize for coming up with a way to make synthetic blood, which he saved millions of lives, of course. It's helped a lot of people. So he's a well-known, like one of the world's top blood researchers slash scientists. So, like I said, the pacing is pretty bad. They literally kind of just get straight to the point with everything. They show him and his fr uh, friend Milo growing up. They live in New York. Um, Morbius has a love interest, but of course it's implied that he's not even trying to, you know, pursue anything with her because he's too deep in his research and he has no idea if he's going to live or if his research will uh, be successful to save his life or his friend's life. And the bats they showed him getting in Costa Rica earlier, Apparently, he wants to take vampire bat DNA, put it with human DNA, so it'll help his body be able to regulate his blood, and he'll be able to survive and be strong and all that. So, like, yeah, they kind of just get straight to the point. He conducts this experiment on himself, testing it in a ship that's off the grid, because obviously what he's doing is very illegal. Now, I'm just going to pause one more time and kind of get a little off topic on the plot. But there's a scene in the movie before he actually does experiment on the ship where he conducts it on a rat. Right. So at first, the rat, they thought the rat died. They thought it failed. Then later on, they showed that the rat actually survived. This is where, like, the plot is kind of silly and the writing is just bad. You're a damn scientist, right? So when you saw that the rat survived, you would think you would do some type of research more into like the results of like what happened to the rat. You would want to see like how the serum affected it, what changed it. We don't see that. He just immediately, oh shit, it worked. Let's have a human trial. Like you didn't think, hmm, you know what? This rat has an insatiable lust for blood. He's He's got the, like, there was never, they just totally forgot that. But anyway, he has a bunch of mercenaries be the security, which, again, why do you think you need security to conduct an experiment? Whatever. So he has the woman doctor, his colleague, actually shoot the serum into his spinal column and like i shit you not like there's no build up there's no tension nothing before we know it he just gets up and he just starts fucking killing like all the mercenaries and like drinking their blood and they like that's another thing i didn't think about while i was watching the movie they didn't actually show him drink their blood he's just killing them off one by one and it's not like you know he He's just a feral monster, which he is. He's supposed to be, but it's like he's actually hiding and he's thinking and he's hunting them. So, which means he's kind of sentient and has some intelligence to a certain extent. But his friend, the woman colleague, whatever, I'm sorry, I can't remember my name. She ends up getting knocked out and unconscious in the process. He murders everyone else and drinks their blood. Yeah, he flees. Tyrese Gibson is actually an FBI agent in this movie. And. He's investigating the ship. They're like, again, they just, oh, shit. This had to be vampires that did this. Because I guess apparently they just know vampires are real in the Marvel Universe. I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the MCU or whatever. But it's not a good movie. But let me keep going with this. 
The next thing we know, and again, like I said, nothing subtle. Like the, the most of the movie isn't even him getting tracked down. Like his friend Milo finds him in his lab because for some fucking reason he just has access to his laboratory. He can get in there anytime he wants, even though there's like dangerous experiments and stuff there. He asks him, How did you save yourself? How do you have these powers? Blah, 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 blah. And he pretty much explains to him, don't do this shit. I'm a vampire. I'm a freak. I'm a monster. And I I can't control my lust to drink blood now. It's a problem. So, yeah. Obviously, he's a fucking vampire. So, he has a, a, a countdown to how long before he needs to feed. But he can use synthetic blood to actually slow this down. But the problem is the synthetic blood doesn't work for so long. So he has to drink people blood at some point. He's going to have to. Tries to explain this to his friend. His friend doesn't fucking listen. Even though it's not shown at the time. He ends up taking the serum. Which again, how did he know like where to shoot it inside his body or how much to give his... Whatever. It's a movie. Next thing you know... There's a scene where it's supposed to be ambiguous who actually murders this woman, but a nurse is killed at the children's hospital that Morbius works at. Next thing you know, Tyrese is on the case. He's like, okay, we got to stop this guy. They ended up finding Morbius like minutes later. Next scene, coming out of his, uh, his facility at his little laboratory. Gets into like a brief little scuffle with the the police, whatever, tries to escape, dodges bullets. Like he's a superhuman. Like this plot that he even got caught. He obviously wanted to get locked up. I guess he felt guilty about wanting to drink blood and all of this stuff. And interrogate him. He it's like I don't remember murdering that woman. I know I murdered the other people, but I guess it's possible. So like he's in a maximum security prison. But keep in mind, like, he literally can dodge bullets and, like, slam through concrete walls and buildings. So it's like, what did you think you were doing by, like, locking him up there? It's stupid. It's almost like Hancock. He obviously chose to be incarcerated. But his friend Milo shows up. Next thing you know, he's he took the serum, but we're not supposed to know that at this point. Even though they show up minutes later. Supposed to be implied that I guess somehow he just knows how to lie well. He tells the prisoners that he's a lawyer. He went to talk to him. He tries to explain to Milo, hey, fuck this shit. Like, don't take this stuff. Like, leave it alone. And Milo tries to explain to him. So, I mean, what? You just want me to die? You just want me to give up? It worked for you. They show him leave him in prison to rot. Next to you know, oh, uh, spoilers, he can walk. He took the serum, and it was him that killed the nurse. Morbius ends up figuring it out that he needs to stop Milo. He breaks himself out of prison. Now, all of a sudden, because he has superpowers, he can walk, even though he didn't want to be with this woman at first, and they didn't show any real buildup to show that she liked him back or anything of that nature. The shipping is kind of horrible because, again, it's not built up or anything. There's no chemistry between them in the movie. Now, all of a sudden, they're together or they kissing all that shit. You know, it's a movie that had to be put in there. So, Milo's a dick. Morbius hates the fact that he did this to himself. He regrets it and he doesn't want to hurt people. Milo's the complete opposite. He's a bully. He's going deliberately out of his way to hurt people. He ends up killing the mentor that him and Morbius had as children. And eventually, he ends up killing uh, Morbius' girlfriend to draw him out. Next thing you know, they have a little dramatic fight. All of a sudden, Morbius can control bats. And he ended up having to make a serum that I guess would reject the bat DNA in his body or some shit. And he kills him. So that literally the movie. And then of course it's Marvel, so there's a little post credit scene that connects the movie to the MC universe to Spider Man No Way from Home. I'll let you guys watch that on your own. You've had enough spoilers. But 
if it seems like I was bored telling the story or the plot or I was uninterested, it, it, it's because I was and I found like so many plot holes and things that just like didn't make any damn sense. Like again, how is Milo just able to get into a maximum security? Pre oh, I'm his lawyer. Like just like that, wearing tennis shoes and shit without no credentials, just nothing. How is it that Morbius is a like a scientist, like a world class scientist, one of the fucking best. He won a Nobel Peace Prize, but like you didn't have common sense to look at what happened to the rat, your first trial, before you just oh I might I might as well this shit work. I'm gonna do it on myself. Like you didn't actually conduct more studies on the rat to see how it would affect you. Like what if you just instantly killed just like you I guess we're supposed to believe he was that desperate. Then, like I said, like the pacing and the setup is just horrible. Like shit just happens instantly. Even when a movie tries to it, uh, surprise us with plot twists and stuff, like that's like if we found out that Darth Vader was fucking Luke Skywalker was Walker's father, like a half an hour into Episode Four. You're not even trying. It's not even a big deal if 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 you just showed us what happens like minutes later in the last scene. Gee, I wonder who it was that killed that nurse. We're going to make it out like it's Morbius. We're going to play with you guys' expectations. Oh, a second later. I, it was my, like, they don't, they just, they, there's, I like the fact that there's, like, no bullshitting around. Like, it's not too slow, but it's also too fast. So, that's why I feel like the movie just, I didn't have a problem with them as actors, you know. Michael Keaton was cool and everything. Jared Leto was cool, you know. It sucks that this is his second superhero movie or comic book hero, and they, they just keep bombing. I I really don't have anybody to blame but the writers. You could make the argument, you know, oh, they didn't stick to source material and all that, but let's just be real, guys. Especially when it comes to comic book movies. These people are trying to make money, so they're going to try to appeal to a more mainstream audience, so they're going to do whatever they can to try to appeal to people, to make it more believable, to not, you know, make it ridiculous and stuff like that. So even though it's fiction, it's going to be ridiculous, but they're going to take liberties. They're going to change things around. You just got to accept that. That's just how Hollywood is. But I'm not going to say the movie isn't entertaining. Like, I personally felt like they could have did more with the world building, like New York and all that. Like, it's it's not even rated R. It's really PG-13. There's no real blood or guts. There's no real violence in the movie. The fight scenes are just a bunch of CGI effects of Morbius dodging bullets and throwing people and all, you know. There's no real hand-to-hand -hand combat or anything. It's like, it's, it's not really nothing. Definitely PG-13, or at least it should be. But if you watch the movie and you disagree... You feel like I'm not giving it enough credit or anything. Because to be honest, I didn't say a lot of things that I thought were good. But I can't think of a lot of stuff that was good about it. Yet. It's just it's just executed all the way wrong. I don't want to say that this is a completely horrible movie. But I can't see myself watching it again. Maybe if I'm bored and it was free on Netflix or something one day in like a few years. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did you not see this movie and do you plan on seeing it? Did you see this movie and you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know. Make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe if you aren't, and I'm out.